Hello and welcome everyone back to my another tutorial. Last time I was talking about handwritten sentence recognition within TensorFlow. And this time I decided to move to a way harder task, do a real-time speech recognition with the same TensorFlow. This tutorial will follow my previous tutorial where I was showing you how to, from scratch, train the handwritten sentence and words recognition. And you can check this out here. So this time, I'll go to the way harder task, real-time speech recognition. So 10 years, 10 to 15 years ago, the speech recognition was a really challenging task, but we we started to crack it on when the convolution neural network started to improve and the computer started to improve and etc. And we were able to compute compute and calculate things way faster. So these days, uh, real-time speech recognition is not magic. You can see there is a Google, Siri, and another a lot of applications using it. But if you're interested in how to do it by yourself, you can always follow my tutorial. So for this time, I'll be using the LG speech dataset. That's kind of open source dataset with 2.6 gigabytes that contains 30,000 short videos. Uh, I mean, the audio recordings with uh, readings from a book. And that's one of the nicest datasets used nowadays to start training the dataset. Of course, to get the uh, recognizer to work for everyone for every people every language it's not enough of course but for for learning purposes it's it's pretty nice to start with this one so uh also i will be building on my own ml tube uh library and th this time this tutorial will follow 1.6 uh version and I recommend to continue with this and always when you follow my tutorial, check the MLT uh, package version because in the future when I'm working, it might be not compatible uh, with many library stuff because I'm building on top of it. I'm changing many stuff and etc. improving and, and I'm working on it. So continue on this tutorial, I'm not going into the theory about uh, speech recognition or etc how and why we do things, but simply I'll jump on the code. So mainly I have this data set that I already downloaded here and I have one, for example, there is uh, these many audio recordings and 30,000s and we can listen for one of them, Printing, for example. Printing, in this the only sense with which we are at present concerned, differs from most, if not from all, the arts and crafts represented in the exhibition. Okay, great. So there is a lot of similar recordings and we will be learning from these recordings. And of course, there is a lot of met metadata that tells us what is what. For example, what was said in this audio recording. So let's jump to my code actually. And uh, not to worry, uh, I will mention that I already prepared the short script that will download this data set and prepare everything for you. So basically, let's go from the beginning, step by th step in my code that you can find on my GitHub. And of course, there is a text flash tutorial link in the description below, so you can check this out. So mainly, what I'm doing, I'm importing many different packages. These are mainly for uh, dataset download, extraction, and iterating. These are my machine learning training utility functions, mainly for the creating a uh, model in TensorFlow, uh, reading, reading the var files, uh, labeling the text, padding the text, but, uh, creating the spectrogram. There is uh, some callbacks, transformers used to, to it, the loss function uh, and, and so on. So let's go step by step here. So basically what I'm doing here, uh, I created this short script that will download this kind of uh, dataset file from, 
for you. Of course, it, it takes usually a little longer than going to this link and download it manually, but instead it's way easier for you simply to run the script and wait it to finish because it will extract everything into the data sets into the right place where it should be. For example, here. And these are links especially for this place and you are good to go with this kind of data set train it or change the architecture of the model or whatever you want. So next, when we don't load this data set, we need to read the metadata that I show you file there. And this metadata file contains the file name, transcription and normalized transcription. And we simply read all the lines from this file. So next we are creating a, a data set list that will contain the path to my audio recording file and the transcription and of course I'm using the lower to change the capital letters into lower ones because well it's practically really hard to to, to recognize it's a capital or not from the speech. Okay, let's move on. And here now I'm iterating my data set. And that's specifically for creating the spectrogram. And if I go to War Reader for example, uh, here I give a file path and I here give a lot of uh, options. And these options are specific for audio reading stuff. And they are set here. So for example, frame length, frame staff, FFT length, and etc. And these are all related to the audio stuff. So let get gets back to here. And for example, if I want to get spectrogram, let's get to my war reader. Uh, object, it's in the preprocessor, as you can might see in my MLT package. So here uh, I'm defining them, and all these attributes have the their descriptions: size, sample, number, fee components, and etc. And here I use a librosa. So don't forget to install the requirements for this library before moving on. So uh, here I simply uh, load the raw audio file and mainly you can look how it looks like right now when we read it. Pure data that you, it's really hard to understand what's happening here but we definitely see that something is changing here. So next uh, we are interested in the converting it into the spectrogram. So mainly I use uh, this kind of additional functions to to pre-process it and we don't care about that theory why we are doing this but simply we need to pre-process it because it's way easier for our neural network to recognize what was said when we give our pre-processed data for so and here are several additional functions that we use to display these. Well, I'll come back to this later when I'll show you how to run inference on our model. So let's go back to the train. And as you can see, mainly I have here a spectrogram. And here I have a, a validation labels, a valid labels. So this means that I simply are collecting uh, labels that are in my vocabulary and this vocabulary is also configured here and these are all the characters that I have interest in other characters I'm I don't I'm not interested we simply drop them from our transcription and then uh, we create this kind of label structure and then I, I'm checking what is the maximum spectrum length and uh, in configuration set it as config input shape because we need to that our model should have uh, the constant input spectrogram length because well the arrays should have the same size it's way easier to work like that and train when working on the batches so that's it so I simply record this into the configurations file. So later when we are running inference, it will be way easier for us. And then I'm using my data provider custom ML tube object that is very specific for TensorFlow as of yet. And uh, I feed in the data set. I skip the validation. I set here the batch size. And of course, 
uh, here give a uh, data preprocessors because well it's way easier to, to work like that and when we are iterating it always gets the the audio path and it reads it on and returns it back so uh, it's simply the audio preprocessing and then i need to transform this data to make it uh, all the same so this means that i'm padding the short audio recordings into the largest audio length so for this we use a spectrogram padding object then i have a label indexer that we convert the our uh, string text into the numeric integers so that, that that for this we use my vocabulary and then uh, we using a uh, label padding so this this is for simply to match all the same sizes in my kind of uh, that data set when we are feeding it to my model so that's it this is pretty simple data provider and as you might see i'm not using any augmentations because well uh, i was interested simply to see how it trains without any augmentations of course there is no no not much we can do with audio data but of course there is uh, ways we can augment our data but this is for maybe for future draw or you can do it by yourself if you are in working on this kind of project so we had this data provider and now I'm, I'm interested to split it. So I use 0.9% uh, split. So this means 9% for training and the rest 10% is for validation. And I don't think it's it's necessary to explain why we do this. So next we use uh we define our model so right now this model is different from what i was using in my uh, handwritten text recognition because now it's uh audio data and it's way harder to understand what's happening there and what it's still so it needs a larger and make way more complex model so mainly what i do, am doing i removed several convolution layers and added uh, a lot of a long short term le memory layers to improve the the stuff that it can learn from the sequence data so that's all and of course this is in my uh, tutorial object repository so let's go back to the training and here i define my model and as you can see i oh let's see uh, the, inputs are simple the spectrogram that i am expanding so i could use the convolution 2d and then lstm with it but you might test what architecture works for you this works for me doesn't matter so i keep with it so let's go back to train and then i'm compiling my model and for this i'm using the ctc loss and for metrics i'm checking the chart error rate metric and word error rate metric and this is the interest i have to to see how good it performs and later we can check the tensor board how it was training and what metrics it gave and this is run eagerly only for debugging reasons if you are developing testing something or etc so let's move on and these are several uh, callbacks that i try to use all the time when i'm sent training uh, at least not everyone but early stopping is a must uh, model checkpoint also uh, tensor board it's very useful reduce learning rate and etc and conversion to the own next that's well that's these callbacks speak for itself so uh i don't know if it's necessary to explain it in details and now well when everything is defined i simply call the fit function on kind of train data provider and validation data provider and when it finished it simply saves the training and validation data sets into the, the same folder in case in the future we are changing model architecture and we want to see how it works because the speech recognition as i said it's harder stuff than for example handwritten recognition so right now i already have trained it for not to wait uh I don't know 10 hours for it to train right now uh maybe we can check that 
uh, logs and then support how it was looking, uh, how was the training looked like. So I go to my models, sound to text, and here I have the logs and I need to copy a little path and tensorboard log directory and let's open it. Let's see how it works. And let, wait, let's wait to load. Okay. Okay, let's open my tensor board. So here it is and let's maximize it to see the results. And as you can see, it started somewhere here. We can see actually the beginning, but it's nothing surprising. And as it was going, as it was training, we clearly can see that my child error rate and validation rate was dropping. Well, differently is with our EPO loss, but still, we as we are not that interested in loss because uh, check the error rate or word error rate actually tells us how well it performed when we are doing this on validation data. So uh, we can see that it was dropping quite nicely. Here is the training one and here is the validation. There is a huge difference in them. But for example, if we are interested, we know that uh, our validation achieved 2% error while training was really close to zero but well that, that's not very good that it has such a huge gap but there's several ways how we can remove it we can add way more data because it's only a few gigabytes of audio data and uh, i believe it would improve while adding additionally 20 gigabytes of data in, and would generalize better and also we might change the architecture of my model and of course augmentation also would help. So if we move on to the word error rate, it, it's very similar to character error rate. It's like a mirror, but with a larger uh, gap because, well, if word has a error, your character is definitely have in a word. So, but we already know that. So who cares? But we are really interested to see how it works. So right now we can see that in validation it had 7% error and it's pretty nice compared that only 7% of, for example, 7 words of 100 words has an error. It's not that large because even a dot is an error if we miss it. So let's move on. And here's the epoch loss and etc. But who cares about that? And as you can see, it trained for me for 13 hours. That's a lot compared. And one epoch took around five to seven, six minutes. So yeah, it takes a lot of time to train such model. Okay, because we are not using any transfer learning. We are doing training it from zero. With the transfer learning, well, it would be way faster if you use some kind of open source model. That's okay, fine. You can see how it trained and everything looks great. Simply to run the training, simply run this file. It will load, download your data set. It will pre-process it. It will train it and it will save this data set along the model. So right now, I believe you're interested to see how it actually works when we train it. And here I have an inference model. And it's not a secret, I believe, that there is a model to own in X, special uh, callback, that I use uh, to convert my TensorFlow model into the own X. It's way easier to in use for inference later. So, so here is the basic uh, detector. Uh, word to text model and I simply feed it the, the spectrogram that I read with my get spectrogram uh, function. So, but first, uh, 
what I'm doing here. So here I save the validation training CSV files, and that's the purpose why I, I did it, because we don't want to run inference on the training stuff. We want to run this on the validation to see uh, how well it performed, because on training, the error will be zero, and there's no reason to do so. So right now, along with my model, I also save the configurations. So this base model requires these configurations. So it will be way easier later to read the audio file with the same uh, parameters as we did in a training, because if we change one number, it will be different and we can't use it anymore. That's the problem. Okay. And here is the spectrogram uh, that I already showed you, but and we can see it how it looks like. If it will show you the raw data and spectrogram, and then it will run the prediction on this padded spectrogram, and it will give us a true label and it will calculate the chart error rate and word error rate. So let's move on. As you can see here, I have 1000 audio files in my repository. And here is the spectrogram. And here is the transcriptions for it at last in the 20th month. Well, that's nice. And if I move on, here is the, the before it was the raw data, now it's a spectrogram. This is the spectrogram. Cool. And right now I moved the chart error rate and uh, here is the true label. And let's see what is my chart error rate and word error rate. And actually chart error rate is 0.03. And it seemed like we made one error in or, or a few errors. And that's not that bad compared. Yeah, it's, it's error in this word. And let's move to another spectrogram. This is the raw data as I already show you with a different sentence. It's, it's way longer as you can see. And here is the spectrogram. Nice, nice. They look pretty okay. And, and as you can see here is a huge gap. It's in spectrogram very similar. The gap is here where no, no one is speaking. So it works. Let's move on. And there is the chart, the error rate, and etc. So this way I iterate all the data set and it gives me the same uh, chart error rate as it was giving for me when I was trained the model, the metrics I was using. So, so that's it. And it's nothing really uh, hard how to work with that. If you want to test this with a single or audio file, simply uh, change this for loop into the one uh, audio path link and run this on several files. For example, I recommend these here. Run on these kind of lines. Here we give a path. Here's the configurations and we pad the spectrogram and then we use a predict and it will give us the text because the Moodle predict has a CTC decoder that decodes it for us. It's not necessary. We don't need to worry about anything else. Well, instead that you need to install this MLTU package. And that's the problem because if you're working with a PyTorch, you can't uh, install this because it is dependent on TensorFlow. So I thought about maybe it would be great to remove this dependency by separating uh, TensorFlow stuff from the naturally used NumPy stuff. And maybe I'll start working with uh, PyTorch. The tutorials maybe would like to implement the same tutorials within PyTorch and make some wrappers to make it usable to use easier. Because for my understanding, PyTorch doesn't use any fit functions, any callbacks that, as you can see, are very useful when we are training. 
and it doesn't use any metrics to track uh, the training stuff it's everything like uh, how we use it how we want it so it's very flexible but sometimes it's really good it's really great to use some kind of uh, specific rules for our uh, implementation so uh, i'll think about that so, so so i think that's it and as you can see it's pretty not that hard when we are checking from the practical way how we can recognize the, the speech recognition depending on what data set you're gonna use because i believe it might work not that great if you record your own uh voice and try to recognize because it's very specific uh, to the people who were reading the books but you can try this out and you you might imagine why it's really hard to recognize uh, the speech because there is a, a lot of variability be between all of us what the accent we have and what what we're saying or for example what letters were missing in words when we're telling all of this adds up and it makes it difficult for the computer to recognize the speech but for this time it's pretty easy and we implemented the, all the solution with pure tensorflow convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks with lstm of course uh, i believe that it would be way harder and way better with the transformers because you might already heard that there is a chat gpt and etc and these transformers are supposed to work with the language models better so uh, maybe in the future i'll work out up to this but uh, for now i'm not that familiar with transformers i need to begin with the uh, easier steps to make it work with the harder stuff so for for this time that's enough and I, i'm not sure what i'll create in the next tutorial give me any suggestions what you would like to hear what I should cover and we'll see in the next tutorial. So thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Don't hesitate to uh, write any comments, questions uh, into the comment box below. Don't hesitate to subscribe, like this video, share, share it with your friends and wait until the next one. And we'll see you there. So thank you for watching and goodbye.